Hello coders, welcome to my channel. I'm David, your guide to mastering programming. In today's video, I'll start a series on Python. The tutorials will start from basics and move on to more advanced topics. Now, why learn Python? The answer is very simple. Python is a very versatile language and a pretty powerful one with many usages. Some of them are in data analysis, embedded coding, AI, machine learning, deep learning, also even some web development. But at the same time, it's not that hard to learn, so it's a great place to start your coding journey. As you can see, it's a very useful skill to know nowadays, especially with the AI industry growing so rapidly. The coding editor I'm going to use in this series is PyChar, because it's very good and I'm used to it, but you can use whichever you feel comfortable with. Other good option, of course, it's VS Code. Now. Let's get started. Our first code will be the iconic Hello World code. In Python, if you want to print something, you'll write the print function, open the parentheses, and now if you want to print some text, open the quotes and type the text. In our case, I'll type Hello World. Now, if you want to run this code, you'll simply need to click on the green triangle or type shift plus F10. As you can see, our text hello world is printed. Now, most of the time, we don't want just to print some text. We want to store some data, process it, and then print it. In that instance, we use variables. Variables are containers for storing data. To create a variable in Python, you'll need a name and a value. So, for example, our first variable will be called x and it is going to have a value of 1. To assign a value to a variable, you'll need to simply type the equal sign. There are many data types in Python. I'll cover all of them in the later videos, but in this video, I'll cover the five basic ones. The first is the integer type. I'll, I'll simply write it down for you, integer. Also, I forgot to mention, all of my code and future projects, as well as some pictures, links, or whatever I think it's useful to you, will be on my GitHub. The link to the GitHub repository will be in the description below, so feel free to check it. The hashtag sign here means the characters from now on are regarded as comments. Comments are text for the programmers, not for the Python. Python doesn't see them. So this line here, I mean, this text here doesn't affect our code. It's useful for someone who is going to look the code to know what type it is. Another data type is float. Float comes, the name float comes from the floating point because this, well, this point floats. It can go from here to here. I leave it just here. This is float. Float, floating numbers represent numbers that have some decimals. Another data type is complex numbers. Many languages don't have complex numbers built in, but Python has. This is complex. Complex. If you haven't heard of complex numbers, they are the numbers which have a real part and the imaginary part. The imaginary part is the number before the J. In our case, it's three, as you can see. Also, another data type is Boolean type. Boolean type has only two values, true or false, like in Bull's algebra. Boolean. Another important thing, true has to be big. 
these two and these two are on the same, as you can see from the colors of the characters. Also, another type is string type. The string type we already used to print our text. It's here. I'll call it S1, open the quotes and type the subscribe. A string is an array of characters. It's a textual data type. There are two ways of, re of representing strings, using the quotes or apostrophes. For example, subscribe. These two are the same. More, you'll learn more about strings in the later videos. I'll simply write this down for you. String with string with quotes. Now, if you want to print the variable, you'll just type print, open the parentheses, and type the name. For example, x. As you can see, the value of x is printed. 1. Now, we can do all that for all those variables that we have created. As you can see, 1, 2. But maybe you don't want to list this print function a thousand times. In that case, you can just type comma, then type the variable name, use comma again, and type others. For example, I'll use C and then T. As you can see, all these variables are printed. Important thing to notice is they are separated with the space character. Operations in Python and even some more advanced ones. For example, we can use simple addition. X plus Y. We can use also simple subtraction. If you are new to programming, Multiplication is represented with the asterisk sign, x times y, division with the backslash. Now we can print all those variables. Oops, I forgot the comma. As you can see, all the values are printed. So now some of the special ones are the power. Many languages don't have power supported on its own as an operator, but rather as a function. We'll learn about functions in the later videos. For example, we can use x to represent a power. We can use double asterisk and type 2. This means x to the power of 2, which is not <laughs> very useful because it's 1. Let's say 2. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. As you can see, whoops, I need to print E. As you can see, 4. For example, I can write 3 here. x to the power of 3 is 8. As you can see here. Also, another cool, cool trick is that the exponent doesn't have to be a real number. I mean, not real, but the integer number. It can be whichever, whichever you like. For example, say w equals x to the one half. This means root of x. w is root of x. Let's print that. Print w. As you can see, square root of 2, it's 1.41. We can use 3 here. This is the cubic root. As you can see, 1.25. Now, Python support two more operations that I want to cover in this video, div and mod. Div is represented with a whole division. Whoa, let's create another variable, I'll call it q and give it value 5.
delete this x div div is represented by two backslashes uh, q oh i want q div x div means how many twos are in five but the floor value which means it just wants an integer number not a float thing number it can be 2.5 or 2.3 twos in five if it's 2.5 twos in five it will say just two as you can see if i print it print div it will say two Another operation is mod Q mod is represented with the percentage sign Q divided by Q mod X print mod mod means when I divide 5 by 2 how much is left in this case it's 1 because when I divide 5 by 2, the 1 remains. Now, I want to mention something for those who come from other languages. If you come from languages like C or C++, you, you may have noticed that I didn't type the type before the variable name. For example, I didn't write here int or here float. That's the power of Python. Python is interpreted. It's a dynamically typed language, which means it goes line by line and executes the code, not like in C or C++, which are executed, or rather say compiled. So the difference between compiling and interpreting is that interpreter goes line by line and makes the decision at a runtime. So it goes line one, prints the hello world, line three, Okay, x equals 2. It says x has a value of 2 and 2 is an integer, so x is an integer. Same for q, and then when it comes to y, it says okay, y has a value of 2.5, which means y is a floating number, and so on and so forth. That's how Python works. That's why in Python, a variable has to be initialized. It, that means it has to have a value immediately when it's created. For example, I can just type R. This is a mistake. But in other languages, you can, because you'll just specify the type and say int R and leave it just like that. That's important thing to notice. I want to cover some naming basics. Python is case sensitive, which means lower and upper letters are not the same. T and T are not the same, which I told you before. True and true are not the same, as you can see here. True has an, a color. Also, names can have special characters or numbers but it can start with a number for example i can have a variable name w1 but i can have one w as you can see more about naming and the standard in python for naming i'll cover in some other videos to be more precise i'll write a video about that. I hope you found this video helpful. Like and subscribe and see you in the next one. Until then, keep coding!